Welcome back to uh, the podcast by the Sons of Israel, for the Sons of Israel. We are here today to deliver episode 182 of uh, the Super Mega Podcast. I'm here with my good man, Ryan McGee. And I'm here with my good boy, Matthew Watson. I said man, and you said boy. Yeah, because it's the it's the duo, you know what I'm saying? The man and the boy? The man and the boy. We should change our name to the man and the boy. The one with the beard, the one without one. The, the one with glasses, the one without. The the, the fat, the, the, the husky one, the skinny one. Uh, d- uh, d- straight line and circle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, there has to be differences between the duo or else who are we? We 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 would just we would just you know melt into the rest of just yeah. everybody else if we were just two twins. We should change it to the to the, the the man and the boy podcast. The man and the boy. And all of our all of <laughs> I our like branding. That title, the man and the boy. It actually sounds creepy. it sounds. Uh, I think that's a podcast. If I had a stepson, I'd start with him. It, the it man sounds and the creepy, boy. dude. From this, like ah, that you do you listen to the man and the boy podcast? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. It's like a grown man man and a little boy. Just like, do you listen to the Man and the Boy podcast? Uh, Kind of rolls off the tongue if you speak fast. The Man Man and and the Boy boy podcast. Yeah, Yeah, the Man and the Boy. Man and the Boy. It sounds sounds like uh, (laughs) one of those guys at the auctions that reads the shit out really fast. Yeah. That's a fucking talent. I wish I could do that. The Man and the Boy podcast. God, someone's going to take that and run with it. That's fine because I I, I wouldn't want to have a podcast called The Man and the Boy podcast. Why not? Big, Big Man and Little Boy podcast. We could have called it Big Man Little Boy Podcast. Yeah. That that rolls off the tongue too. Big Man You're Little Boy Podcast. You're not a little podcast. boy though. You're skinny. You're not little. If I was short, that would seal the my my fate as a little man. But luckily, because I'm tall, I don't have to. I, I'm not called little. I'm yeah. just petite. I just I have big man, and it's not because of my height. You're you're tall. That's the thing is I'm <sighs> yes. You're not six feet tall. Well, all of all the people I hang out with are six feet plus. You, that, all the Tucker brothers. That's the problem. Tucker Prescott. Uh, Aaron and Dan were both. Aaron and Dan. First of all, on Dan's Grant. Wikipedia page, it says he's six three. That's not true. I think he probably put that there himself, or he counts his hair as adding extra. Dan yeah. is not six three. I just want to throw that out there. Sorry, Dan. I'm not trying to. I just went when I see an injustice. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? You couldn't give me one fucking extra inch. My girlfriend broke up with me. After making fun of me for f- almost a goddamn year. His girlfriend leaves him when she hears this. She's like, "You're not six three? That fart you put in the goddamn episode really put me off to you. <laughs> I'm doing everything in my power to undercut you." For those who don't know. Dan wanted to do a, uh, he gave us a video. We worked for Game Grumps. It's a long time ago. We've said this many times before. In fact, it's become its own meme at this point. The, People have asked many times, what episode is it in Game Grumps? It's some, I don't I don't remember, but you guys do. I, I just put, Dan was trying to make a heartfelt like, hey guys, go check out my new music video. <laughs> for like a, like a heartfelt Peter Gabriel he filmed, song. He filmed it with his phone in his car. So I added a very muffled like, and the, like, he made it sound as real as possible. I tried to make it sound like it was like kind of coming, like like in his silence, like, you actually got it to where his face was looked like it was straining for a fart a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> it just like I try, but my goal of that was to make it look like he farted during the video, but was like, oh, no one will hear that or realize it, so I'm just gonna keep keep going. I, uh, my, my my see, you have that on him. My favorite thing is that he had to pull me aside one day while I was uh, eating lunch. Or I was getting lunch and everyone wasn't there. He just kind of came up to me. He's like, "Hey, man, um, do you think at least for the thumbnails you could not edit my face to be so fucking terrifying? It scares my grandma." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, sure." Do you, and I just made it worse in video. My favorite thing is, he, of course, it doesn't scare his grandma. Like she doesn't. She probably doesn't even see him. He's just like. Oh. My, my grandmother had a heart attack this week, and when she saw the thumbnail you did, Ryan. We never edit their faces in the thumbnails. It was always their uh, goofy cartoon heads, though. Yeah, and, like, the power out. Okay, so Tucker. Uh, okay, never mind. It was power, power. Okay, so we, we'd do a little fuckery <laughs> here where we'd, like. But I wanted it to be subtle. Like, there's some where uh, I'd push Dan's hairline back a little bit, <laughs> but just, like, half an inch, and then I'd, like, slip his eye, like, slightly lower than one of the other. <laughs> so it's not, like. Downright, like, oh, something's wrong with him, but like, it's but on that, first look, you're just kind of like, oh, that's an average looking person. It's like uncanny value, yeah. it's just slightly making him more ugly, which is a horribly <laughs> mean thing to do. Like, you know, I think it'd be different. Like, it, you and I do it to each other in videos, but like, and that, that, that's fine, but like, in um, one of our most recent Patreon uh videos, <laughs> I watched on, it on the yesterday. Vegas trip. I, I, with, with those pictures, I just said, 
fuck the little details. I, ju- I just made one eye like where the cheek was. <laughs> yeah, I saw you made the, the one. The I did one with you. Your... I think did, I did you push my hairline back in one of them? Yeah, and I made your forehead really <sighs> big. <laughs> Thank God, dude, because when I saw that picture, uh, I was like, like, so I was with Harrison and someone else and we were watching the video and that picture went by and after was like, oh man, Ryan fucked up my hairline there. And I sat there for a second and I was like, in my head, I was like, wait, what if he didn't? What I if that was just did. my hairline? <laughs> no, no, I definitely, I definitely did that. And I and I pushed up. I, I made a yeah. Little... You made one side like a little bit high. I noticed <laughs> yeah. that. That was so funny, man. I watched that. Uh... I like our. I like that's the second one. We need to do more of those. The slideshows. They're just fun. Yeah, we put these. Uh... Well, they're fun. <laughs> well, we went. We got to go to Vegas. Of course, it was fun. <laughs> it wasn't just for that. Bit. No, we went to Vegas just to celebrate Carson's twenty first birthday. The Ve- Vegas had nothing to do with like. Oh, thanks Patreon for paying for a Vegas trip. No, that was personal vacation. We just decided to take pictures and we're like oh why not upload to the patreon well we do these things on patreon now called a uh, digital scrapbooks where it's like a little we make a little slide only two show. so far yeah but we're gonna do more where it's like a little slideshow with music and uh each picture has a title yeah it's very fun sorry that january was it's just we were having our health problems but uh february and for the rest of the year if every if one of us doesn't die or come down with a horrible illness coronavirus. yeah coronavirus or uh, dude i'm telling you i think something's going on with my colon again Past two okay, days, yeah, let's, past let, two let's, days haven't had a solid shit, and I'm getting like that weird kind of like gassy feeling right here. Ooh, okay, guys. No so, blood, no blood. So, well, well, the 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 saga of Ryan's colon had come to a close, or so we thought. But it, it might be opening up for a. This sequel. is like a like a fucking like Hollywood producer being like, "Wow, that actually got that story got more attention than I thought. We need another one. We can't just give them the same thing. How are you gonna make it worse? Ah, uh, and now this is them coming up with an idea. They they already. What I'm feeling now is them green lighting a sequel, and now <laughs> now they have to figure out what what the plot is. I just laughed like a little capuchin monkey. <laughs> I I uh I I'm, I'm I don't want you to have any colon problems. Neither do I. But but like Ryan, I gotta figure out how to pay my doctor. I don't think I paid my doctor yet. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> I tried calling the, his office today. And he was like, if it's an emergency, press this. And he's like, leave a message and we'll get back to you. I'm like, no, pick up your fucking office phone. I got uh, two letters from the DMV. I know uh, he's busy. That was I, that was a character. Don't think I'm that I'm that misunderstanding of someone. I got two letters from the DMV that I have like overdue charges, but you can't fucking pay them online. You have to like send you, a, not if they're late. If you're on time, you can pay shit online. I'm like, oh, of course like they make your, it like this for your uh, registration. You can pay online up until it's, it's out of date. If it's out of date, you actually then have to go into the DMV. I think. Yeah, and it's just it's a, it's a whole thing. Shit, it's, that's coming up April. Oh, I need to get on that. I need to re-register. I guess my registration's up in April too. Should Dude. we not? Should we not say that? No, it's fine. Maybe oh, there's nothing, okay. nothing wrong with that. Someone doxes us just based on like. <laughs> The registration expires in April. Oh, easy. How many Fuck people man. live in LA? It's only a, hand, a small handful of people's registration expires in April in LA. Um, Dude, guess what? What? I rewatched a movie, and uh, I'm embarrassed to say it still choked me up. I, I watched Click. <laughs> it's a bad fucking movie, dude. There's like this part where uh, it's like, let's just say. The girl's name was Karen. She, he's he's like, what happened to Karen? He's like, oh, she, she goes by Steve now or something like that. And then he looks over and like the woman has a beard and is like, oh. Then he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like the classic like early mid two thousands like gay panic and like trans panic yeah. jokes. Like you 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 said uh uh earlier today because last night I had my first like I guess you could call it a night terror. This had never happened to me before. <laughs> And I'll get in that get into that in a minute, but I woke up screaming, and and Ryan was like, "I'm imagining you had a dream where like you're at a bar and you go up to like a hot girl <laughs> from the back and you tap her on the shoulder and she turns around, it's like a dude with a beard, and I'm like, ah! And I wake <laughs> yeah. up screaming like in one of those, oh, oh! you're like in a cold sweat. Oh. I really want to make a compilation of like early 2000s and 90s movies with like the th- that that where, like, scene. There's you see like short shorts and it's like, like hey, ooh. beautiful. It turns around, it's like a dude in a mullet with like goofy teeth. It's like, oh. <laughs> 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 if we ever make a super mega movie, we need to have that exact scene happen. Dude, I, I'm um I have to go back and rewatch it from the start, but I started it and then I ended up having to go do something. But I started a movie called Tremors with Kevin Bacon. If we if you and I are to make any type of movie, I would love to make 
like a dark comedy monster movie like get like practical mo- like a practical monster built like a pup like puppetry and animation and like have sets built and like have don't really go on visual effects so much as practical effects and like have real explosions and make it really cheesy but like go back into like a you know those straight to VHS monster movies where like they just put a dude in a wolfman suit type of thing oh yeah yeah, Except yeah. I want to do one where it's I, I want to watch I I want to finish Tremors cuz it's actually somewhat entertaining but I just really would love to make a B monster movie with you. So I would love bad. to make a fucking monster movie. <clears throat> we should make the super mega movie. But like the point of it is it, it it's harkening back to like that era. That so like kinda. I want to get it to where we've um rent cameras. It would be like we would rent cameras from that time like studio as cameras like studio cameras from the 90s yeah that'd be and sick. like film it like that'd be that. really cool because i'd want it to have that look and that'd i don't want to you know you can you can actually make it look perfect in post the way you want but there's something about just getting it clean out of the gate like you, that. you need to use that actual old it's, film it's and... nice it's yeah, nice fuck it, dude. but anyways uh so last night I, I i i choked up during click again yeah that was the I'm sorry. Just wait, whole... wait, wait. Was it was it the part when uh when he when he slows down the woman jogging and, and her, <laughs> no. big, her big breasts are going to do no and it's, and it's not the part where he goes where he goes I'm gonna make my I'm gonna turn myself green. Oh, I'm the whole God. now I, I love you and he turns himself purple. You love me and he sings the Barney theme song. That's some of Adam Sandler's best work. The the part that always chokes me up is uh the. The part with his dad, where he's like mean to his dad in the office building, and his dad walks away crying, and I'm like, just seeing it, like I just picture like me being a dick and like making my poor old man cry, and I'm like, God, that sucks, man. So don't make your dad. I know cry. why. I'm gonna do some Freudian uh, psychology here, Ryan. It's because it 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 makes you remember that time you flicked your dad in the back of the head and <laughs> made him have a mini stroke. <laughs> I slapped him in the back of the head. How hard? It was just like a little. <laughs> there is something about like getting hit in the very back of the head. It like makes your like in a in a cartoon <laughs> was, your eyeballs roll he was around. Stepping down from a curb, so he was just. <laughs> I, I, I feel bad, but he was just like. <laughs> like he just. <laughs> I was young, and I didn't. I, I just. <laughs> I was just like, I'm just gonna tap him on the back of the head as a little joke. What, what if? What if? What if? What if when you did that? It just like <laughs> I like picture people thinking like I'm just like we're wa- we're walking out of the store. <laughs> Fucking uh, I wanted the Nerf gun, Dad. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, son. What if what if that like disattached like one neuron? <laughs> that's gonna make him like die ten years early now. Well, I wouldn't know that was my that was my cause though. Well, unless a doctor went after your father unless dies. A, unless a, unless a doctor brings me into his office and and sits me down and goes now. I brought you in because you're the closest of kin uh, that he has right now. It's not true. He has a wife, by the way. Anyways, he was... <sighs> not after I steal her. Did, uh... You didn't want to steal Kristen. Yeah, she doesn't have a good taste in movies. Anyways. She got a fine ass. <laughs> Maybe. That's Maybe. For you. That's are for you, you to find are out. Are you agreeing that your stepmom has a nice ass? She might have a nice ass. She I'm might? Not... What? She might? I don't know. You'd have to judge it, man. Well, you're saying it very like she might. I have can't a nice ever head. get onto my topic. Sorry, always, go go to your topic. No, I forgot. I forgot. No, no, no you're talking the about the moment, doctor. The moment, <laughs> no, I, no, 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 no. I, the moment I realized I'm forgetting, it's just because you're always like, yeah, and this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let me tack onto this bit. Now let me try to get back to this. Okay, sorry. I think this is the podcast in general. You're talking about the doctor. What was I talking? The doctor is saying. No, it doesn't matter anymore. No, no, it does. It no, does. The, the I think the the mere fact that it's brought up now, I, I'll. Y'all lose out, Matt loses out, the whole world loses out on my terrific fucking comedic ideas. Ryan, studies show that <laughs> group, Study. group punishment does not is not effective. Well, I'm sorry, this is this is how it's gonna have to work. And uh, if I don't see you lose a hundred thousand followers on Twitter, I'm not oh, gonna tell this dude, story. Come on, yeah, there has to be a price. There has to be a price. You people just gonna, got to three hundred thousand. People are gonna I know. unfollow me now. <laughs> I know, dude. That's gonna hurt you gotta, my ego. You gotta come back down to my level, my man. Okay, so you're in the doctor's office. Doesn't matter, Ryan. Come on, dude. <laughs> and he says, "The only way this could have happened would be if you're on the right track." It doesn't matter, though. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to throw you off. I didn't mean to throw off your groove, <laughs> dude. You, th- you li- like the emperor's new groove? You threw off my groove. I'm sorry, man. It's been rough. It's been rough. What's been rough? Life? 
I had a night terror last night. What happened? I guess that's why I could call it. What was the actual dream? So I had a dream uh, that I was going to bed and I looked out a window into my backyard and um, I see like a hooded figure standing in my backyard and he starts like walking away and it was really scary. And I wanted him to get in my backyard, so I started yelling. Was like, it a person or was it like a creature? It was like a person, like a guy in like a gray. He's wearing a hat? Gray hoodie. No hat? No hat, just gray hoodie. Hmm. Um, and I started yelling like run at him to like make him run away. And then I saw a second person in my backyard. And it's and then I woke up screaming like. <gasps> <laughs> and I, I, it's never happened to me before. See, Terrible. I've never had a night terror. I've only like the only time I've I've woken up screaming is when I'll have sleep paralysis and like I'm trying to wake myself up and then eventually it just is like ah! like you just kind of like it comes out eventually when you I guess wait when your body wakes up. Yeah, <clears throat> it was scary. But I, the way I was screaming was I was like inhale screaming like <gasps> <coughs> out. <coughs> I hurt my throat doing that. Fuck. <coughs> it was, like, it was, sounded like a velociraptor. <coughs> <laughs> and I was like drenched in sweat too. I had a no, bunch I should of do dreams. monster. I should, I, dude. How come I'm not doing monster movie noises? Check this out. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. The coughs included. The, the coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Ross told me uh, a, a long time ago. Ross told me I should do the. I should be one of those actors that plays like those weird spindly monsters in movies with like the prosthetics and the suits, like on all fours. Because I, I got, I got that. There's that famous actor I don't know I forget his name I gotta I, I want to look it up but there's this actor they specifically use they used him they use him in movies like Mother and movies like Quarantine where his body is set up in a way to where he's very lanky and very skinny so he's by default kind of eerie looking he just kind of puts you off in a in a creepy way I guess yeah that's why he's used so much he has long fingers too probably has Mar fans. I want to look him up, but he's using a bunch of stuff uh, specifically because he looks a certain way. Let me see. Uh, actor who plays mother in mother. That's the perk of having Marfan syndrome, guys, which everyone thought I had for a while on the Internet. Everyone was trying. Try OK, the Internet always tries to diagnose me. They say I have Marfan syndrome and they say I have, I have Bell's palsy because I speak out of once in my mouth more. I have neither. What was the movie that was that Guillermo del Toro produced? Wasn't it called Mother? Mother was is mother it recent? Movie. No, mother was. <sighs> mother was the uh, one with a uh, mommy. It's oh, what is it? Oh my god! I'm gonna look up. It's a Del Toro movie. Uh, actor who plays creature quarantine. It's Del Toro didn't direct it, but he think he produced. Not Doug Jones. See, mother is also this. There's two movies called mother. Javier Botet. Ooh, let me see. Yeah, Javier. Oh, yeah, I see. He's got the, uh... Yo, the, so I'm looking at pictures of all the dudes that play monsters now. See, that's him. Okay, what, what is this movie called? It's the one where the creature looks like that. It's I, like mommy something. I haven't seen that. That looks creepy as fuck. Javier Brotet's fucking awesome. He's actually a very handsome Mama. man. It's called Mama. Mama, okay. Mama. Yeah, Wasn't played... there... No, there was a movie... Okay, so we have Mother! Exclamation point. Mother from Boon Jong Ho. We have Mama, and then we have Ma. Like stop, <laughs> dude. We should do it. We should do a back. -back <laughs> we should marathon. do a mommy All marathon. That's that's crazy. I'm sure there's a movie called Mommy too. I guarantee there's a movie called Mommy. In fact, I'm gonna look it up right now, dude. Mommy. Oh, and then we can do a, a daddy a movie night where we can do. A, can we watch Big Daddy with Adam Sandler as well? Big Mama's house and Daddy's daycare. Big Mama's house for okay, the Mama one. Big Mama's house. Uh, which there is a 2014 movie called Mommy. And a 1995 movie called Mommy. You know what? I'm going to commit to it. This week, Ryan, I'm going to jerk off to the Big Mama's house scene. Okay. That sounds really weird for people that are just casual listeners <laughs> and have no idea what the context of that is. For those who aren't aware, uh, Matt lost an odds are to where he now has to jerk, uh, masturbate to completion while watching a specific scene I chose for him uh, from Big Mama's house 2, which the scene is on YouTube. Uh, and I specifically chose one that's poor quality, and it's just a conversation. Like, it's just a conversational scene. Isn't it a guy filming his screen, too? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. What, what is it? Big, I forgot what it was called. Big it was Mama's in a Let's Play, or it was in something. We mentioned it. To, yeah, but I, I lost a bet where I have to masturbate to completion to that scene from Big Mama's house. Yeah. Uh, which, you know what? I don't want this to keep going on where it's like, ooh, like the bong mm -hmm. rip I have to do with the mop water. Yeah. Like, same, and where it's just going to be like, it's been a while. It has. Usually I, you do these things like 
the same day. Well, I'm not like I could technically, yeah, I could probably go into the bathroom right now and crank one out. But no, I can't do that. I can't do. I can't do it under pressure. No. But sometimes you have you have to be in the mood to jerk off to Big Mama. But here's what's gonna suck, dude. It's gonna be late at night, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna crank it, and I'm gonna be like, wait, <sighs> never. I, well, I, I guess I know what material I'm watching tonight, and I'm gonna have to watch uh, Big Mama. Do you remember what the scene was? Um, hold up. Spa day scene. House to ooze. Big. M- On the beach. Oh man, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of scenes. Yo, Rasputia causes mayhem at the water park from Norbit. Dude, what the fuck? Hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. This is really, this is big. So, what happened? Remember, we were talking about Norbit on the last podcast, right? Yeah. Oh, I found it, by the way. What scene is it? No, nah, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable. You, I don't feel comfortable. You jerking off to this scene. Why? This is a child. Oh no, I can't do that. I can't do that. How about this, Matt? You just have to watch Big Mama's House 2 deleted scenes. And it's a 14 minute, 14, 14 minute, 42 second video. And so just. There's just, no kids in it, right? Um. No. Oh, there are breasts. So. Yo. No, I, no, no. I'm, I'm going to pick you out of scene. That's, How about the hot rock massage? Hot, scene? Ro- hot rock massage works. Just do that. Okay. So, guys, this is going to be very. But there are, like, kind of unclothed women in that scene so it will help you out a bit how about that you know okay well uh i just stumbled upon a clip in my recommended call rasputia causes mayhem at the water park and that's that classic scene from norbit where rasputia goes down the water water side yeah um so this was uploaded one year ago she land on something Uh, yeah like a dog and crashes through doesn't she kill something by landing on it or something she kills the dog later or she hits the dog um but on purpose, right? Mm-hmm. She kills it on purpose, and that's like one of the like moments where like Norbit like is like, Ooh. yeah, he, Norbit was he was steaming <clears throat> red. He, st- he stands up for himself. Yeah. So. What was the dog's name? Who cares? Um. Anyway, uploaded one year ago. This scene from Norbit. So this was uploaded. In, let's say. Uh, let me actually look. Uh, this was uploaded April first, twenty eighteen. Okay. Do you want to guess how many views this clip from Norbit that was uploaded in twenty eighteen has? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thirty million. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Holy! F- Two hundred and thirty. That, that's what. Look! Million? Look! Two hundred twenty-nine million six hundred thirty-four thousand three hundred fifty-three. Look, Rasputia causes mayhem at the water park. <laughs> Two hundred twenty-nine, six hundred thirty-four thousand million views. <coughs> Norbit was a bigger hit than I thought it was. Jesus Christ! Like, do you think the algorithm just picked up that clip and was like, "Because Norbit wasn't that classic of a movie." Where it uploaded in twenty eighteen, no. someone's like, "Oh, I gotta go! I gotta get the scene." No, it's like it's like Eddie Murphy's equivalent to Mike Myers' Love Guru. I would see, I would feel in his career. I haven't seen it. We talk about Love Guru so much. I feel like I, if that needs to be now that we've done Delta Farce Night, we have. How come Love I've Guru. seen all these classic movies and you haven't? You know, you know, I might I might have not seen The Godfather's Part One or Two. Uh, might have I might have not seen American Gangster, you know, a lot of classic movies, um, people, people movies that people love. But how come my friend Matt hasn't seen? He didn't see Delta Farce. Delta Farce was I I wasn't allowed to see it when it came out. Well, then when it came time, when you became of age, you you were like nah. When probably I, wasn't even on your radar. You probably forgot about it. No, it was it on my radar because of my cousin, my cousin. Oh always, yeah, he loved it. And he, he quoted uh, the "Who yeah. farted" scene, but he always told me it was "Who fucking farted," and I was so nope. excited for it. And then when I watched the scene with you, I was like, "Oh, it, that was PG thirteen, and they didn't even use an F, which they're allowed one, aren't they?" <clears throat> yeah. Damn. Well, they could say "fucking" PG movies back in the day. Yeah, but that's when the rating system was different, so you couldn't really say it was still PG. In yeah. The- okay, so can we do a double feature soon at your place? Sure. I would love to... Or we could do what we did last time, see something in theaters, then see some, then go back to my place afterwards. Hold that thought, Ryan. I gotta, I gotta take a leak so bad. Why don't, why don't you and I go cross streams while everybody enjoys a short little break with uh, some sponsorships? All right, let's, let's uh, d- d- roll the clip. You know that Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. And you know how great it feels to save, don't you? But how does it feel to save with honey. Well, to answer that question, Matt, saving with honey feels like sliding into a seat on the train just before the doors close, oh. like hitting every green light on your commute, like Love it. commute. Sorry. <laughs> 
It feels like uh, remembering how to pronounce a word correctly after you mispronounce it or pronounce it in a way that may be seen as odd. That's a good feeling. That's a good feeling. Actually, commute is the one word I always mispronounce. Commune and, and commute. I always mix them up. Commune? Because commu- I, 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 you I, can I, commune. Yeah, and, and co- commute. But it's different than a commune. Yeah. Anyways. I got Honey installed on every computer I own, and I own probably 56 computers. Um... With all that gamer money, fifty-seven I have. plus the one at work. Yeah, fifty-seven plus the one at work. Uh, and basically, Honey is so simple and easy, and that's what I love about it. It's like, it's not this whole advanced membership thing to get to save you money. You just install it on your browser with like two clicks. Then when you go to check out at pretty much any website, it'll be like, hold up, we just found coupon codes. Boom, twenty dollars off. It's like it's just free money essentially. And that's the best thing, because Honey is absolutely free. Honey's found its over 18 million members, over $2 billion in savings. And did you know Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, including Macy's, Target, Sephora, Best Buy, and more? And they're adding more every day. Users love Honey. That's why it's over 100,000 plus five-star reviews on the Google Store are a testament to its quality. Absolutely. Using Honey feels pretty great. Think of it as a little daily victory. Plus, it's free to use and installs in just a few seconds. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash megacast. That's joinhoney.com slash megacast. megacast. That was my Ray William Johnson transition from one ad read to the next. Yeah. Matt, as most of us have found out the hard way, like you, your dad, your mom, and your sister, getting into debt is easy, but getting out of it is hard especially if your credit score isn't great. Thankfully now, there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Upstart goes beyond their... Upstart goes beyond their... Oh my God. The traditional... Upstart goes beyond their... (laughs) Upstart goes beyond their traditional credit score with when it, when assessing your credit (laughs) worthiness. F*** it, I I said it right. That's good. We actually... They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you, because you guys know how easy it is to mess up your credit score by accident. It should not reflect you as a person. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate. Since it's just a soft pull, it will not affect your credit score. The hard pull happens only if you accept your rate. The best part, once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. The The next next day! day! Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart's ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash supermega to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash supermega. Upstart.com slash supermega. And we're back. Did I tell you I watched almost all of Goldmember recently? Almost all of it. So now I've seen Austin Powers. Solid gold. And I've, I, I've, so I actually, all three it's Austin gold, Powers, I've seen about gold, three-fourths of gold, each one. It's gold, it's gold, it's solid gold, baby. It, I watched <clears> up until <throat> it gets bad. He's got the Midas touch, da dum da dum dum but he touched it too much, da dum da dum He's gonna member. Because I watched, uh. He's gonna member. I watched the, uh, like the first <clears> half of that movie is good, and then it, just kind of tanks, but I really love the fucking. <laughs> it's, it's it's Austin Powers. I know, the but third the, Austin Powers. The first movie. one with like it starts with like the fucking movie scene with Tom Cruise and stuff as Austin Danny Powers. DeVito, Kevin Spacey, okay, Gwyneth yeah. Paltrow, uh, Steven Spielberg is in it. Mm-hmm. Britney Spears is in it. I feel like by the third one they were doing that kind of Zoolander thing where it's like, how many celebrity cameos can we throw in this movie? Yeah, which I gotta say, a Zoolander Austin Powers crossover would be a good movie where they team up. I think so. You know? Cause I, I think Mike Myers is a little too... I was watching uh, his performance as Austin Powers, and I feel like he's a little too old to play that role now. Yeah. I just, I just feel like but that might they be waited good. too long. Well, they, they, could, they could bring him back, and it could be in the future. That oh, is true. behave, baby. Yeah, but I don't know. There's something about the energy of Austin Powers. I don't feel... Maybe... Uh, maybe... How old is Mike Myers? I'm, I'm in my head. I'm like, oh, he can't move the way he did. Maybe he's not as old as I think. He definitely does look older now. I looked him up recently. He kind of <clears> has that <throat> thing, you know, when you get above like 50, your face starts to kind of bloat. Yeah. Like, uh, why does that happen? The bloat, like in in male adults, their faces as they get older just kind of bloat. Because you know? your metabolism stops, essentially, not stops, but it 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 gets worse. Yeah. I wonder if that. I guess that'll happen to me too. I'll get the bloat. Dana Carvey 
Dude, Dana Carvey. Okay, Ed, no, that's Eddie another Murphy one we need to watch. Still looks good. Eddie Murphy's older than Mike Myers. Eddie Murphy has like a tiny bit of the bloat, but he's still rocking it. Isn't that the the famous saying, "Black on crack"? Lord, he's fifty six years old. I just don't. <sighs> Mike Myers is fifty six. Yeah. Oh. You thought he was older? Yeah, I thought I thought he was really? in the sixties. Yeah. Let's just think of these actors about the same age as our parents around there. One day we're gonna turn on the TV and see that Mike Myers has passed away. Yeah, but we could also be elderly when that happens. Oh, I I mean that could be we could easily be in our forties or fifties. Yeah, I mean even in our sixties or seventies, some people live to like ninety something, hundred something. Not actors though. No, well actually recently, who's the actor that died? What was his name? He was like a hundred and three. Uh, super famous old school actor. Nah, I don't know. I forgot his name. He was, I don't know. I don't know. He was, he was huge, but he he just died recently. He was like one of how big was he? He was like eight feet tall. Jesus yeah, Christ! He's fucking massive, man. I uh, what celebrity death? do you think will be the most shocking to you? And, okay, two things. What celebrity death will hit you the hardest and what celebrity death will be, what do you think in 2020 a big shocking celebrity death will be? Because there's always celebrity deaths each um, year. Knock on fucking wood, but I think one that came to mind, because the, the two big ones are, have already happened, you know, for me, which Steve Irwin and Robin Williams. Those are two huge ones. Um, but if I if I could think of one that would just kind of like make me depressed for a while, it would honestly be Bam Margera if he dies oh. any any time within the next like decade. Honestly, I'd just be fucking like because I'd be like it's way too early. He didn't get his life back on track, and I just I, I hope and you, that and you would know why he died. Yeah, too. and it's just because he's suffering from alcoholism, Horrible and addiction, alcoholism, yeah. and and it, you know regardless of what kind of person he was, he he was a lot in my child. You know, he's that kind of fun. Child, when you're a child, you look at everything that he, they're doing. And you're like, they're older, they're cooler. They're you know, he's skateboarding inside, <laughs> and so there's a, there, there's a, there's a lot of nostalgia there, and there's a lot of uh, just that feeling as a kid where you're watching something and you're watching someone else break the rules, so you don't have to, so you're still getting the excitement out of watching it. And I I, I think it would just be sad because I really want I I want him to get healthy. That would so. legitimately bum me out. Yeah. Obviously, right now, I think the most shocking death for me would be, like, the most, like, holy shit would be either Donald Trump or, like, Bernie Sanders just because of how big they are, yeah. like, in the world. Um, or even, like, Vladimir Putin or something. Just, like, so, like someone big mm -hmm. dying. Um, I, or even, like, Kim Jong-un, you know? I think the death that would bum me out the most, Tom Hanks would really bum me out. I'd yeah. be sad by that one. Um, I cried when Mr. Rogers died. I was a little baby. I was I was a little bitch. I remember laying in bed crying that night. No, that's the same for me with Irwin. I remember just like a week at, even after it happened, I was at my mom's and uh, I just started – people are like, yeah, what are you talking about? I used to switch off ever since I can remember um, until I went to college. I would spend one week with mom, one week with dad, one week with mom, one week with dad. So I think he – he, he, I heard the news when I was like staying with my dad for his week. And I remember carrying that grief over to when I was staying with my mom because I just, like, started crying. And she, like, came in my room. She's like, hey, what's wrong? I was like, Steve Irwin died. Did I miss him? She's yeah. She's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. It just didn't seem fair because, like, you see this, like, happy dude. And when you're, when you're young, you form bonds with people through entertainment that maybe aren't necessarily true or healthy but like it's a bond you form you it's like you like this you love person them, yeah, yeah. You, you go to like love them in your head and and i i think uh celebrity deaths are like i guess a weird topic because uh well kobe bryant like i've never been a huge basketball person but that death surprised me oh and, I, it, and it led me into learning more about him saying that because the only thing i really wreck sorry for interrupting no no, no I'm, sorry but um the uh the only this i don't want to fucking have a bunch of people go oh okay ooh. but the only things that i really knew about him three things is that you know he was a he was one of the best basketball players ever um the second thing is i used to play as him in a nintendo 64 basketball game and the third thing was i just remember a lot of jokes in a time period like at his expense due to sexual assault yeah um so i knew i knew of that that's how i kind of knew uh, uh kobe bryant were those kind of the the trifecta of like an early video game, just his name being around in general in the basketball scene, and then the sexual assault allegations. Yeah, because I've I've never been in a basketball. I've just ne never been to sports, but that one did shock me. Just because, like, even though I know nothing about basketball, it's the way it was, right? 
You just know the name. No, like, I mean like the way he died. That's why it was so surprising, right? Well, he's young and he died in a helicopter crash. Yeah. So, well, I remember I was up early and I was I was him and like eight other people. His daughter, really. His sad. daughter and like eight other people. Mm -hmm. I, I'd have to look up the exact number, but multiple people, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I remember I was at IHOP and I just got this notification on my. Uh, no, no, no. Carson actually texted me. He was like, "Damn, Kobe died," and I was like, "What?" And I, went I thought on it was Twitter. a joke. Justin texted me, and I was like, "What?" But see, that's the thing is like these people, like. You know they're not into basketball, but it's that's a name that everyone knows. So it's like whoa. Yeah. Um, well, especially for LA, the city that we live in, where you and I are Kobe city. fairly new to it in a sense. I mean, I, I'd say it's my home now because I've been living here for about five years. Happy five years. Thank you. You just passed it. Yeah. Last month. <clears throat> I know, right? And uh, you're gonna be passing July. five years in July. Yeah. But uh, so I I, it just you could definitely. Feel it in LA just because like lights would change to Laker colors or you'd see a lot of people repping it and I, the and buses I, yeah all the all the buses that uh the signs like the digital signs on all the LA buses that display like the next stop would interchange between like the stop and then RIP Kobe mm -hmm. um and when I like so many I saw everyone wearing like the the uh the jerseys and, and i saw people at the cars. staples center was the big kind of like uh what are they called uh, a lith not a lithogy what is it called eulogy not a eulogy it's a it's it's a thing that uh like when someone passes away um a, it's like a candle lit blank what is it called oh candle lit uh damn it dude i i i know the <laughs> right? word i'm gonna look this up candle lit uh, epiphany no, no. candle lit Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> no. This is killing me right now, dude. Candle it's not candlelit eulogy. Lit. Candlelit. Oh, fuck. Vigil. 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 So, like, you know, the Staples Center is where a huge vigil was, essentially, where people would put their jerseys and like, candles and stuff. Yeah. Well, um, it's, it's I, I guess it's, like, fascinating because it's, it's a person that none of these people really knew, but it's, like, someone that everyone it's like a common interest that everyone had that brought people together and they felt a lot of pride in because people from LA uh would be like oh man he's like he's representing like our city he's fucking killing it like yeah. that. so everyone would feel like such joy over that well also like <clears throat> people were following him since he was essentially in high school or fresh out of high school he has been in the public eye like he died at 40 47 47 I think. yeah think about it ever since he was like the age of like let's say 17 18 he was on kind of like whether it was to a large scale or a smaller scale he was on people's radar right like throughout his whole life he was that talented where he went straight from high school into kind of just working his way into becoming one of the greatest when you think of the greatest basketball players you think of michael jordan you think of kobe you think of Shaq. lebron you think of Shaq, you think of magic johnson um you know just kind of like the, the best way i could describe of when you ask someone who is who is like who are the best basketball players, it's like who can you picture on the next Space Jam poster, essentially, <laughs> and like that's that's that, that that that's who I see. Um, now I'm, I I remember one night I got uh like a long time ago I got uh ridiculously too stoned and I started going on YouTube and watching like videos of of the news announcing like famous events like when it broke and i just Mine like, was 9 11 I, I every now and then i'll go back and watch you know that video where it's like as it happened oh it's like an infomercial and then it cuts off and it's, it's like it's 9 11 as it happened and it's like it's it's i think like probably four or six hour video oh and they just together all the channels all the channels all the news as it legitimately like happened the first ha like how the day was like hey it's a beautiful september 11th morning uh, and then the first plane, second plane, and they just keep switching between news networks. And yeah, then, that's a great video. Um, well, that because it shows just how quickly everything everything changed. changed, the world changed, and I think that is the by far the biggest event of our lifetime that's happened, and probably will remain the biggest event of our lifetime. Yeah, like September 11th was, like I don't see anything that big happening again. Again, Matt. It the, could. It could. It could. It's, it's only been the first twenty some odd years of our life. We have a good many more decades to witness. Damn, it's, something. it's only been nineteen years since nine eleven. Yeah, and politics are getting a little more uh, um, strange yeah. in America. Well, I mean, not date like it's not. F it's quote unquote. However you see it, it's 
danger. I feel like where politics is right now, it's dangerous because we're focusing more on team mentality than ever. It is dangerous, yeah. Um, I mean, you always had team mentality. When you think of going back even into the 80s and 90s, uh, the, the presidential candidates there, there's always been a team mentality. It's yes. definitely different now, though. But the but the ilk, that you, like the, the people you get that are, I think, that streamline a certain cause or streamline a certain candidate there it's you're you're banking on like for i think for bernie he's banking on a lot of people from you know as well as the left in general but also the far left in terms of the ideas that he's bringing along right mm -hmm. um donald trump is banking on not just the right but the far right where they're banking on like uh the far side of each aisle yeah 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 um it's it's definitely I th I'd say it's coming more to a head than uh you know it's coming to a boiling point more than it's just the internet and everything and, and maybe maybe I'm wrong on that because I just haven't been around long enough and because now I'm an adult this is the first time I've seen this kind of shit because I mean if we lived during the fucking Vietnam War era, we'd be like oh shit but well definitely like things were a lot crazier back then in terms of I, I think, think it's events ebb and flow it's a cycle where it gets really crazy well you know history really repeats itself but it's in a different it, it's the same circle but it changes uh slightly each time and i feel like in in certain cases it can be worse the re one of the reasons i feel like it's worse right now is because um we're it seems like we're not focusing on whether a president or the person in charge is is right or wrong where you're basically just there's two sides people who will take everything he says and slap it on as like a lie or the most horrible thing ever. And then you'll have people defending everything he says and saying, Oh, it's just a joke. And so there's no, there's no legitimate conversation to be had. He's the at most... all. The same thing happens sometimes with like Obama when you, they got him for his suits. And the, of course the, the same thing happened with um, George Bush. Are we forgetting came... the Dijon mustard crisis? <laughs> the Dijon mustard. I mean, every president has their things, but I, but I definitely, I, I've never, I've never, um, like, I, I'm not, okay, maybe I'm not the best when asked about this. I'm not a history major, but it's hard to imagine from my little knowledge that I have of history class or from what I've seen in documentaries and stuff, I don't feel like I've seen a fan base, like a, like a president have his own fan base as strong as Trump has his. No. You know what I mean? Like, He's, it's a, it, it seems more fan Basey than 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 it should be because there's a lot of people out there that he speaks to that there should be a like fan they... base in politics yeah and and there's a lot of people that he speaks to that feel like they haven't been represented before so I think that's why so many people come out and they just that he's the most polarizing figure in America and God knows how long when well because like the there, there, there's also problems that the left has um, in terms of because when you th when you think of Donald Trump got to where he was because of the faults of both parties, you know? Yeah. Um, the fault of, I think, the left at, at some point is focusing on issues that don't really speak to people in middle America. They're, yes. they're issues that people really focus on in left-leaning cities, but things that people don't really know or care about that have a farm or that have uh, a job in a smaller town or just old or think of middle-aged people and beyond. Like, these people aren't really – they're caught up – there's some people who know about what's going on in terms of uh, the po the political sphere when we're talking about social justice, right, and women's rights, um, stuff like that. But I just I just don't see your typical person in mil middle America trying to hash out um, the transgender issue over their political stake in whatever uh, venture they're in, whether it's agriculture or whatnot. No, you know I, what I, I, mean? I I I agree. Um... And I think I'm not saying those issues aren't important. No, 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 but no. But, but I, I understand like a middle a, a middle American farmer is not gonna you know someone who's been conservative his whole life is not gonna care about transgender issues. Yeah, like some some you know this isn't a knock again because you know like some uh, thirty something year old that's working in a gro as a grocery store manager is is I don't know I, I just feel in a small town it's just a different circle they're in a different circle yeah, but than so many those different who people live out in and cities. that's uh, we need a president that speaks to can speak to everyone but the thing yeah. is I think that um because if, if I mean you guys know we do talk about politics sometimes with super mega and I know some people appreciate it some people don't like it if you don't like what we're saying or disagree that's totally fine 
Um, Still conversation we're having. Yeah, it's like, I mean, because this is real conversation that Ryan and I would have off the podcast, too. Yeah. And I don't know how to exactly classify my political leanings because... Um, I think your Twitter makes it perfectly clear. Okay, Matthew. well, no, but I, I say that in the sense of I you're used a, to... F- you're a far left-leaning cuck, okay? That's what it's called, I, okay? I, I'm a little... Matt Antifa watch. <laughs> Sorry, uh, go on. No, it's the thing is it's uh, really only in the past few months have... Things have been changing for me. In terms of how you view politics and engage with it? Yes, in the sense of I used to um, very strongly trust mainstream media that was left-leaning, such as CNN, MSNBC. MSNBC. But now I'm realizing there's a huge difference between – because I thought thought it was Democrats versus Republicans. But then I realized that there's – Democrats – there's like establishment Democrats mm-hmm. and then there's like progressives, which yeah. are people that are fighting for issues where establishment Democrats are at the end of the day, they fucking suck too. Yeah. And then I realized is, is I started realizing that and I'm like, oh, wow, CNN sucks. All these other news organizations suck like this. Well, that's and like I just can't trust any media now. Well, that's I, I see that. And I used to be like, oh, then who do I trust? And I think what I do and this is how I'll explain it is. People can say that I support these people, whatever, but I will watch um, every now and then I will watch segments of Steven Crowder or I'll watch Ben Shapiro segments, just like I will watch majority report segments or Young Turk segments. And then I will then go into other segments of like real like MSNBC. I'll watch sometimes far, I will, I will, I'll try to get like a if I'll watch something that I view as far right. I'll view a far left and I'll tr- always try to just watch everything, even if it's humorous, even if I'm like, oh, Steven Crowder, this is a goofy idea. I'll watch it because it's an argument that the right has. And then I'll go watch it a far left watching argument like that. And where, while I while because I'll do that, because at the end of the day, I can like essentially view it all and see everyone's opinions and then kind of like pick out like oh these are the ideas that i'm connecting with more and that this person's forming a better argument in this way uh i don't just go to the far left and right in terms of what i listen to or uh read but if i i I feel like if i do like watch an episode or watch uh, a little clip that pops up of the majority port who who do come off as very biased um, against the right then i will watch something that is equally as biased to someone like the majority report no, I, 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 I think that that's definitely not a bad way to approach it at all because you kind of get a, the broad spectrum and make a decision for yourself. And there are some outlets that I will just downright refuse to watch well, like those. Alex Info Jones, Wars, Breitbart, not, that kind of shit. Not like, going to no. pay attention. That That's a lot more of a propaganda. And people – and this is where it gets great because people will also say that ben Sh- they can mix Ben Shapiro and Crowder and a lot of right-leaning people. You can – uh, in the same kind of basket, and there are certain there are case- blurred lines. There, there are certain cases where, like, I'll look at whatever they're saying and doing, and I'll say that's Im- I don't agree with that. That is immoral, or the way you're thinking about that is not the way we need to push forward a society. Like specifically with um, Ben Shapiro, uh, J- Ben Shapiro's stance on gay marriage, where he's saying, you know, I will, I will, um, I will just not support a gay wedding. I'll go out. And I will go out on kind of dinner dates with a gay couple, but I will not go to their wedding. And it's just kind of like that's not that's not a good that's not how you form a good society socially. That's just how you're kind of excluding people on the basis of y- your religion. That's very biased against people and has have it, had a history of of uh, shutting out these people. So where I like to get my the only place I can really trust. Oh, is... I, I was, sorry, I, I just want to make sure I wrap up the idea. Oh yeah, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead, stop. Um, is where like Breitbart and Infowars are clear indications of bias, and while Crowder or uh, Shapiro or um, y- people even put them in the same category when when you talk of uh, Sam Harris, even though he claims to be like more left leaning and stuff like that, all these people they they do have ideas and they do word them sometimes in ways that can irk you but if you can listen to their ideas and and you find what you don't agree with or sometimes you you find common ground in someone that you find kind of like that puts you off if you can find some sort of common ground you can find the thread easier of where you disagree with them and that's 
that I feel like that's why I watch them is because oh. like if I can find a that's point fascinating. if I can find a point where we are level on something then then I can begin to pick apart oh then I clearly just disagree with them on this and I can move on and then I'll like exit out of the video I'm like oh okay I'm I'm kind of sold I, okay. I I I I agree with you on this or like it's like oh I disagree bye that's a, that's a really fascinating method I yeah. I like that and and I I, do I just like watching debate and shit yeah I I do like listening to well, because cause when I – like, if I watch something I don't agree with, like, in my head, I'll be debating it. And, and yes. I, I do enjoy that because I like watching political debates and stuff like that. Uh, where I get all of my news from, the only place I can really trust is uh, 4chan's poll board. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the most accurate source for political and world news. BBC is biased, but, like, I find – That's B a joke, by the way. <laughs> but let me just yeah. throw that out there. <laughs> BBC is biased, but BBC does have uh, de uh, decent reporting every now and then. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think BBC is pretty – I think that, uh, there's a lot of things. It's a lot where, of credible news. There's a lot of yes. There's a lot of credible news, but at the same time, I think m most credible news does have its bias, and it's important to understand where that bias comes from, which by like which side that bias is leaning towards, and why, and why, and then you can form your because like there's things where Money. you'll agree with the the incentives and stuff that CNN places, you know, politically in in their kind of headline or in the discussions that they have on their on their channel. But when you start disagreeing with the way they're going about it, you can then kind of fish out. It's like, oh, then you're just kind of playing the game. Yes. And if you're just yes. playing the game, why am I listening to this if you're just trying? Like, it feels like they're trying to convince me constantly of something where it's like, no, just tell me why I should see it like this or why I should yeah. um, look at, a, I guess, a situation this way. And, and I think I think it's it's uh, the the big thing for me, and it's, it's no surprise uh, – that I'm I'm a very avid Bernie supporter, but mm -hmm. I think that seeing how a lot of uh, left leaning media treated him in 2016 and now because they don't want him to snag the nomination, yeah, I was like, oh, so they don't really care about the issues. It's more about the like establishment of the Democratic Party and, yeah. and the people that exist in it already that don't want someone like Bernie Sanders to be president. I find that even though he's like, the most progressive, yes. I, I well, he's also the most the most consistent candidate out of any party right now. I found a picture from a who is running. Yeah, I, I found a picture from a I, it was either a yearbook or something from the seventies where it's like asking students what they're going to be doing this year, and people are like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna travel," and Bernie's just like, "I'm gonna fight for the for the uh, income inequality that plagues the and I was like, "That was in the seventies, like when he was a I just, young and I just find that like politics a lot of the times unfortunately requires a lot of sacrifice in terms of you may not agree like the, the the classic example would be people who don't agree fully with a candidate but to support the party they will vote for that candidate even though they disagreed with them before or they may not fully you know believe what they say uh who who you do you don't find them ende endearing in any way but you still vote for them to support the party and right um, right so there's 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 spots I, I'm just kind of interested because I, I I do I feel like Bernie is a necessity at this point because because of Trump it is he has made Bernie a necessity because you need something on an equal playing field you need these ideas to clash you need the the kind of as as we've been stating in multiple co podcasts the far odd ideas of what Trump's politics are to the new political ideas slash revolutionary for America ideas that Bernie has. That's a really good way to put it. That's like a, that's a excellent analysis, I think. Yeah. Like that, that, well, hits, that hits the nail on the head. Um, and that, that's why I do like I do enjoy talking about politics, especially in this election, because I think it we are at a crossroads. In, it's, it's, it's very politics is our is is literally what is the structure that uh, that any country is based around. So you have to stay somewhere. And it, it does affects everybody, and it's our future. And like yeah. you know, there will be points where yes, we're going to probably be tired of talking about politics, and then we won't. But like <laughs> this is we're getting into this is election year. You yeah. know, this is a big year, and, baby. You know. You, I, 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 that's about all I got with political talk. But yeah. while we're talking about more current shit, um, yes. What's the deal with that coronavirus? Oh my god! Do you it's, think uh, yeah. that it is 
one of those things like swine flu where it's just it, you know it's it's very everyone's scared of it for a while and then it it just kind of eventually no i think it's it's more like the it's going to be like the common cold i think it's going to turn into like a seasonal thing i think it's going to be really big and just stay it's here to stay yeah cuz I, I at this point i don't i don't see i don't see us containing it no when it, they, us they, i mean we as the people of the world humanity but, yeah i found they they just found out that it's been spreading uh undiscovered for 6 weeks in washington state and i thought is the incubation period still 9 days or is it above that now uh i don't know but it's it's very infectious so it's got a high infection yes. rate and um i'm not like i'm not scared of getting it in in the terms of that like i'm going to die cuz we're healthy young people if we get it we'll, we'll be fine i'm scared of being able to transmit it to people it's the moral it dile- it's the it's the moral thing of uh you don't want to put those in danger like the elderly or young yeah. or the sick i have family members that if they got it they would die so mm-hmm. it's like uh pretty pretty scary and also i i don't want to catch it cuz i don't want to be sick but wash your hands everybody because it's it's starting to spread in the united states pretty bad um i just wonder like a how few scares up in uh kind of like uh the san jose uh san francisco area i think california is ground zero in america for it yeah which makes sense it's on the west coast but um got that bradley cooper not bradley cooper yeah, bradley cooper got coronavirus <laughs> the bradley guys. cooper international airport dude <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if uh it's really gonna start getting to the point though where like everyone's getting it like you and i get it every celebrity gets it every person we know ends up getting it like i wonder if it's going to take on like is it considered a pandemic yet is it like pandemic uh, no levels? i don't think no 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 it's not considered a pandemic until we admit that we can't contain it i think that's when it's a pandemic because the scary thing I about believe. viruses and pandemics is it's like exponential right one person can give it to four people and then each one of those four people can give it to four more people and that's just a random number i came up with but like I, I imagine in the coming weeks we're gonna see a lot of uh, exponential growth in, yes. in the, especially in America. Um, I saw this morning like four more people died in America, which first the first death in America just happened over the weekend I think, and now all of a sudden it's up to like six. I think most of it is in- incubating in Asia though, because mm-hmm. you have uh, South Korea, which is the second most infected uh, country uh, other than China, mm-hmm. right? And then you have to think of all the tourism and business that happens between China, South Korea, Japan, uh, 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 Taiwan. Italy has it really bad, too. Uh, and Iran has it really bad. Well, Taiwan is being super careful. Taiwan is just kind of like, get out of here. Yeah, ta- 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 Taiwan, uh, they, they, they've always been pretty careful with diseases, they've, I think. Yeah. I, but I, I, They I, have uh, to be. I had some whistleblower from the CDC or the Department of Health and uh, Safety was like, yeah, a lot of employees have been exposed to it with no training and with no equipment. And it's like, uh oh, <laughs> it's just scary, man. It's it, it's really, uh, really, really spreading. Because the, the, the idea of like a pandemic is something that you're like, oh, that, that, that won't happen. That won't happen. But then like it, if anything's going to kill humans off, it's going to it's going to be what? Two things. Nuclear stuff. Or three things, right? Disease, uh, nuclear. 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 <laughs> or um, Nuclear. Or. Uh, Aliens. Global warming. Yeah. Or a completely unexpected. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Climate change. Thank you. Or a completely unexpected thing like aliens come and enslave us all. Yeah. You ever think about, a wild like, card. But, but like, do you ever think that that could just happen one day? Some advanced race. The thing just... is, it could, it could, it could just happen, and we're like, okay, this is we're just gonna have to deal with it now. We're the slaves of the universe. They would, they would take us to some other planet to go mine. Rocks. Do you think that would happen? You know, like, would do you think after that this would happen? You know, a Republican would be next to a uh, a black person, and they'd be like, see, now we're on the same team. <laughs> I fully understand what your people went through. See, we're not so not so different after all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> Alien invasion. That sounds like a short film's like uh, Breitbart would fund. I mean, it's like, <laughs> like like bridging the gap between yeah. between racial inequality. <laughs> I, I Alien invasion does 
scare me. I'm not gonna lie. I, I but it's not like on the front of my mind where I'm like, oh, Asians God. scare you? Did I say Asian invasion? What did you say? I said alien invasion. <laughs> oh, okay, For my I don't, the Asian invasion <laughs> is scaring me. <laughs> alien invasion scares you? I can't comprehend what it would be like because all we I think know that's why is, it scares me. All we know is movies. Are there are there aliens that want to conquer? Possibly, like little Vikings, like little galaxy Vikings. You know? I think that in the universe there have to be so many other advanced species of creatures. Just because if 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 we were able to develop to this point in this amount of time, surely elsewhere in the universe with the billions and billions of planets, it's it's happened many other times. Could you imagine how interesting it would be if like we just found a, a planet and we were able to like scope it out with a kind of like a dr like a, a space drone but um we scoped it out and it was like let's say 1800s era america or eight sorry 1800s era just world yeah that'd like, be crazy or like not even, let's say 1700s to make it more fun and spicy but think about how quickly it changed from 1700 to 2000 like the 2020 like the I'm going to use the word again, and people are going to be like, did he just learn what that word means? Exponential. Like the growth of human technology and advancement is just whoosh, as opposed to linear. Exactly. Or because I play Fortnite, and you can choose between linear or exponential uh, for your aiming. There's another one. Quad, quad, quadrilateral? Quadrilateral? <laughs> no, really? Is that what you're thinking of? Quadrilateral. Paraplegic? Parapl no. Some shit Definitely like that. Definitely not paraplegic. Yeah, bro, but there's, there's aliens out there. I know for a fact. They've contacted By definition, me. yes, there has there have to be uh, even if it's just a single cell organism. I watched a great sort of... uh, um, the fucking the PBS show Nova when I was recovering from my anal surgery. I watched a a bunch of that on like other worlds and like our own solar system and shit. And I was like, there has to be like I watched a bunch of shit on like just the possibility of aliens. And it, it's like, what's the is there any possibility that so like so much time has gone by and that the creation of our galaxy worked in a in a certain way to where there could have been an ancient civilization that was on another planet near us but it has been so long that there's n virtually no uh footprint of it I think we're I th I think humanity is or earth I should say is I might be wrong on this but I'm pretty sure that we're actually really early on okay in the development of the universe in terms of like we everything just happened to match up yeah like like we we were we could probably be it's possible that we are one of the first in the universe to develop like this thank god an asteroid that was carrying water or whatever it was and we could be we could end up being the species that leaves earth and you know ends up taking over other civilizations in the future Cause like, we did, because we because if we were first we'd be most advanced cuz nothing originated on earth right it was like an asteroid hit earth as it was being made type of thing and it had had uh wow what is the word like wasn't it yeah uh, <laughs> you're not no, helping no, me no, at all I, you're I, just letting me flounder cuz i can't think of it either <laughs> the words escaping me but it's uh organic Yes. Matter. Um, but I, I think – I'm pretty sure water formed because uh, we had an atmosphere and then all of the gases inside the earth came out and and created steam, which then rained down as well. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but it's fucking crazy. The, 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 the think about the creation of earth and bunch from, from of, the point where it was, was just – a bunch of rocks just going doo, 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 for millions of years and not this. And we're making a podcast speaking to, you know, a lot of different people. It's kind of, it's really crazy. And how we developed English and languages and uh, social understandings and the shirt you're wearing and your watch. It's just weird. It's fucking when I when I get too deep into it, I'm like, I start to my brain starts to shut down. Just be glad you ain't a dolphin, dude. Why? Dolphins smell like they got it easy, man. Uh not if you're eaten alive. Dolphins are the only other species that has sex for pleasure. Yeah, they also get eaten alive, as most things do. Most things on this planet die because they're killed and murdered. What, I mean, yes, that's the same in our thing, but we don't have too many humans going around stalking their prey and then eating them on the streets and then other humans just, like, joining in. Like, we're not animalistic to that nature. There are s psychopaths out there. 
but it's not the normal everyday thing to go out and hunt for food for us, you know? I want to show you something real quick. And we might have talked about this on a very early episode of the podcast, but have you ever seen that uh, sample, that, that, that meteor that came from Mars in the 90s? And uh, they put it under a microscope, and it was that? It's a fossil. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fully real, and it looks just like a like a microorganism, like fossilized. So uh, the consensus is it's still up for debate, but you know a lot of people think that it is um, from the point when Mars, because Mars had liquid water, it had an atmosphere, it was it would have been able to sustain life before Earth would, uh, or even while Earth was able to. So it's it's fully plausible that Mars could have gotten to the point where it could develop, you know, uh, organisms like not advanced, but like you know in the same realm of like bacteria and, and amoebas what so, life would exist on a gas giant no you can't it can't exist on a gas giant not our life well they don't have like a surface well isn't isn't the gas so dense that it kind of is yeah but i don't how i don't know how anything but, would I'm, be but that's what exist. i'm saying it's like we can't comprehend it but is there some is there there has to be at least one gas planet out there that has, life that has it? its own kind of thing going on hmm because when you think of aliens, right, we think of, uh, you know, either bug-like, bipedal, something that exists in our realm of things. But what if it's, like, something we can't comprehend? Yeah. That's, that's... Because people always make out aliens to be... that There's... Human-like. Human-like. Or bugs. But I wonder... Even, even alien and alien, it's a guy in a suit, yes, but, like... It's still humanoid, y even though you're like, oh, it looks like a dinosaur type of thing. It's very, you know, it walks on two legs, has two arms. Well, I want to know if life develops the same across the universe, though. Like if if the formula for life and the way it develops is specific to Earth or where life would develop generally, obviously things would evolve different on but different, different species and stuff, too. different species. But I wonder if like overall, like I would imagine if we found another advanced planet that has like millions of species we'd probably find a lot of similarities between species we have and species they have yeah in terms of like bugs and animals and plants you know but does every planet have its apex species because we are that of earth it there have to be planets where that isn't figured out quite yet just like before humans made it big we were just fucking monkeys dinosaurs right you know? yeah yeah but there's different kinds of dinosaurs there was not one species of dinosaur that was like you know, we we run things. We're going to hunt everything, and we're going to sell things and be nice to each other, you know? Yeah. Well, I guess I can't think of it as, like, a human thing. Dude, I was thinking, I was talking about this yesterday with Harrison and Carson. This is, this is something I've never thought about before, and you probably haven't either, but it blew my mind. Think about how strong a gorilla is, right? Yeah. Gorillas have not learned as a species that they're capable of working out and getting stronger. <laughs> so if a gorilla was able to figure that out and use its max potential to gain as much muscle as possible and strength as possible, think about how fucking strong gorillas would be. I read something that was all... like, they'd be able to lift like 12 tons or some shit. Well, I think they generally in the wild work out every day, right? I mean, not to their full potential. But imagine a gorilla that's full potential like think of like you think of us and then think of bodybuilders think of like a gorilla doing that shit like think of like i want to see the biggest buffest gorilla out there that would be like an uh, okay correct me if i'm wrong in 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 the grand ah! oh did you spill a drink again it's an old drink oh in the grand scheme of things wait is that the one you spilled on the last episode too yes <laughs> in the grand scheme of things Aren't gorillas essentially like I think I've said this before? Aren't they the orcs of human like humanity? Like we have like regular monkeys, which are like the little goblins. We have humans, which are humans, <laughs> and then we have like gorillas, which are like the strong, dumb orcs. And like capuchin monkeys, like little tiny like fairy elf. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's uh, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, you got the big dumb orcs. It's like you don't want to go in their territory. They they just don't. They they'll rip you apart. They got blind strength. Bl they. Because like a gorilla could already just absolutely decimate me. Then within you have a chimpanzees. Chimp Ch chimpanzees would be the dwarves because they're still strong, but they're 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 not as big as the orcs and not as tall. They're not as tall as us, man. Where are orangutans, Paul? Orangutans. Orang or or orangutans. Orangutans would be like the oracles. 
Because <laughs> they like the old wizard that's like sitting there <laughs> yeah. like looking into a crystal ball. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, dude. Those or, 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 orangutans really do kind of freak me out. They don't look right. I like them. No, I no, I do too. They're just like, kind of like the thing with their the with their on the side of their face. You know. Yeah. It looks like when God was like he was creating them. He it, it was play doh and he smushed his finger <laughs> into it and fucked it up. It was like yeah, oh, I'll go with it. it he. he I guess orangutans, when you think about it, they kind of look like a a foogly, one of Floop's fooglies. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm a, is it orang orangutan? Orang orangutan? Orangutan? They they have interest. It's the things on the side of their face, you know. I just like because they have such little, like little beady eyes. They, they have always tiny just, ass eyes. They look like they're just they're the perfect. <laughs> they're so funny. I think they're the I think they're the funniest looking. They're the uh, perfect hillbilly esque looking monkey. Like I could imagine them just sitting on a rocker on a porch, you know. Oh, at, just w back back and forth with like a little like straw in their mouth. <laughs> yeah, a little straw hat overall. I think it's because they get uh, out, of, out of all the primates, they they have the kind of like uh, it looks like they have facial hair. It looks like they have real shaggy long hair. So and and they have just kind of a simple look to them. Yeah, where they just look kind of like simple. Like this is this one I'm talking about. See the side of its face. Yeah. Like that's that's what freaks me out. It looks like <laughs> it looks like it's some advanced alien life form where it it, it like opens up and it has like a face. If decoy. it didn't have hair, we'd think it was this weird alien creature. I want to see what it looks. Have you ever seen a hairless chimp? Yes, but I have not seen an, a hairless orangutan. Orangutan. Hairless chimps still look like chimps. They look terrifying. Hairless. Hairless orangutan. I gotta look this up. Um, There's got to be a picture of one. It is scary how similar they are to us. Okay, all I can... Well, oh. <laughs> Dude. So, chimpanzees... I'm finding a lot of chimp pictures. Look, at here's... here's a... <laughs> that is so weird looking. It's look just at a, Just look at their proportions. It's like just the, an old, the, stupid, naked old man. The <laughs> pot belly and the little skinny arms. I love when it comes down to it, like, monkeys are just stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially, they're just like whenever I see a person with a pet monkey. Look at, one look of my at favorite little... videos of a monkey is one uh, I liked it recently on Twitter. It's the one where they're all around a bonfire and it's like, "Ooh, are you ready for dinner?" And it's like, it's like "Ooh, ooh, ooh!" ooh, ooh. <laughs> 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 like, please go see, go try to find that video if you guys can. It's it's so good. It's like a bonfire and he's just filming this chimp. He's looking in the camera and he's just like, "Ooh." He's like, so you ready? Are you ready for dinner? He's like, whose feet are those? Are you ready for Ooh! dinner? He's like, so excited Ooh! for dinner. Ooh! Ooh! But it like sw switches so chain. It's like, Ooh! Ah! 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 <laughs> and the video cuts off right <laughs> yeah. when he starts screaming really loud. It's going to ruin my voice for uh, the rest of the day. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. I can already feel my throat. You know, after you. Yep, that raw, like, uh, it's like it has to whoop, get back into a spot. I feel that for sure. I'm man. here. Hey, man. And now we're gone! <laughs>